स्वागत है टाइटल है वाई तालिबान इज कैप्चरिंग पाकिस्तान वट इट मीन फॉर इंडिया जियो पॉलिटिक्स के स्टडी तो चलिए देख लेते हैं इस वीडियो के चैनल का विजन आपको हमारे वीडियो के डिस्क्रिप्शन मिल जाएगा सब्सक्राइब कर लाइक शेयर का फॉलो करके चैनल को उसके लगभग लोग चैनल का लिंक उस टॉक के लिंक भी हमारे वीडियो के डिस्क्रिप्शन मिल जाएगा सब्सक्राइब कर लाइक शेयर का फॉलो करें देख लेते हैं वीडियो Islamabad has lost control over large parts of territory in the western frontier regions of the country to the Pakistani Tehreek-e-Taliban or the TTP. One of terrorists in the world, Osama bin Laden. On my orders, the United States military has begun strikes against Al Qaeda terrorist training camps and military installations of the Taliban regime in Afghanistan. TTP, Pakistani Taliban. ये उस रिएक्शन में बने थे और उन्होंने जो पाकिस्तान के खिलाफ फिर जहाज अनाउंस की तो उन्होंने ये कहा कि पाकिस्तान कोलैबोरेटर्स हैं। इन द लास्ट टू डेज बलोचिस्तान हैज बीन रॉक्ड बाय मल्टीपल अटैक फैमिलीज आर बीइंग फोर्स टू रिप्लेस ब्रेकफास्ट विद टी एंड बिस्किट बिकॉज देर इज नॉट इन गैस टू बॉयल एंड एग Hi everybody Pakistan is going through one of the worst economic crises in its history and like we saw in the previous episode their political system has been unstable for the past 75 years their economy is suffering both due to debt and terrible economic decisions and the floods in Pakistan have already affected 25% of its population but now to make matters worse the Taliban Pakistan conflict has escalated to a red alert situation why because just like taliban took over afghanistan from the us army now the pakistani wing of taliban has become so powerful that on 31st of december 2022 tehreek-e taliban pakistan challenged the very sovereignty of pakistan by declaring the formation of a parallel government in pakistan and this government even includes its own cabinet of ministers ranging from defense to education to even ministries of political affairs intelligence and construction and this is a very very big deal right now because the state of pakistan is in its worst possible state inflation in pakistan is soaring at 30.6% they are falling short of oil to run their railways and the citizens are even falling short of cooking oils so the question is what is this taliban pakistan conflict all about what is the connection between pakistan us and taliban how did taliban become so powerful that they now have the audacity to challenge a nuclear powered state like pakistan and most importantly why is this conflict important for india and our security this video is brought to you by think schools communication masterclass course people if you love the way we tell stories and if you also want to present your ideas in the most powerful manner possible come join me in our communication masterclass course I have designed this 6 weeks course such that I will take you step by step from the beginners level all the way to a TEDx level presentation skill. This course also includes special exercises that will help you overcome stage fear to turn you into a powerful confident speaker. And most importantly, if you have any doubts or queries, you can directly talk to me in our bi-weekly doubt sessions and I will personally clarify all of your doubts. Cherry on the cake you also have one full year of access so you can do this course any number of times until you master your craft of communication so if this sounds useful to you and if you want to master the art of communication use the link below and join our communication masterclass course This is a story that dates back to 1980s Afghanistan and if you remember this is when the Soviet Union was trying to capture Afghanistan and in the race of getting an edge in the Cold War even the US had to send its troops to Afghanistan so that they could prevent the Soviet Union from taking control of the nation so in response to the Soviet invasion US and Pakistan came together and did something very very clever instead of sending their own troops they funded the local mujahideen fighters with both money and weapons such that these mujahideen fighters could fight the soviet union in afghanistan and why did they do that because funding the mujahideen fighters was a far cheaper option than paying the salaries of american army soldiers number 2 if the american soldiers died then the government would be accountable to the american public but with the mujahideen fighters no matter how many people die america did not have to take responsibility of the dead and lastly if the american soldiers did something illegal or violated human rights then the entire world will blame us whereas if the mujahideen fighters do something like that then america's reputation always remains protected This is the reason why the US funded the Mujahideen fighters in Afghanistan and after the Soviets left Afghanistan these Mujahideen fighters are the ones who went on to form a group called Taliban 
and even after the Soviets left Afghanistan, Pakistan and US funded several groups to make sure that they could keep control of Afghanistan. We have religious militancy in Pakistan to remove the right to remove the Soviets. We have a Mujahideen from the whole world. We have trained the Taliban, we have given them weapons, we have given them. They were our heroes. ठीक है ये तो हकानी है हीरो है हमारा जी बिल्कुल है वो सामा बिन लाड है हमारा हीरो था सीआई का भी था शायद यस सो दिस वे अफगानिस्तान बिकेम अ ब्रीडिंग ग्राउंड फॉर टेरर ऑर्गेनाइजेशंस but this is why, ladies and gentlemen, things got out of control when a group called Al Qaeda carried out the 9/11 attacks in 2001. And after that, like the entire world witnessed, hell broke loose for Afghanistan with U.S. invasion. On my orders, the United States military has begun strikes against Al-Qaeda terrorist training camps and military installations of the Taliban regime in Afghanistan. It's important for Americans to know this war will not be quick and this war will not be easy. We know this from not only intelligence but from the history of military conflict in Afghanistan. We destroyed the Taliban, many terrorists and the camps where they trained. I'm announcing today additional American troop deployments to Afghanistan. The Taliban regime is coming to an end. And when the American army entered Afghanistan, they carried out an extensive military operation to eradicate all terror hideouts and occupied Afghanistan for the next 21 years. And like we saw in the Taliban US case study, in spite of the US army being the most powerful army in the world, they could not control or wipe out Taliban due to three major reasons. Number one, Americans did not understand the culture of Afghanistan at all. For example, they built a court by spending $1 billion but completely missed out on the basic fact that Afghanis had never seen a court in their life at all. So obviously, they did not know how to go out there and file a case. So long story short, $1 billion and several such billion dollars went down the drain and resulted into no effect at all. Secondly, there was a lot of corruption among US officials because of which they spent a ton of money and achieved no output at all. For example, they spent $760 million into building schools, but the schools were so bad that as of 2017, only 60% of the teachers and 4% of the students could perform a three-digit multiplication. And lastly, they could not understand the Afghani terrain properly. For example, if you look at the map, you will see that 75% of the entire country's area is filled with mountains. So even if the government of Afghanistan was governing from one side of the mountain, if you wanted to control the region on the other side of the mountain, you actually had to connect these cities together. So even though the Americans could establish a government, even after 21 years, they could not build a highway to connect the most important cities of Afghanistan. And this was because the Taliban kept on bombing them. So this is how even after 21 years and after spending $2.3 trillion, the Americans could not achieve anything tangible in Afghanistan. And again, like we saw, out of nowhere, the American army left the people of Afghanistan high and dry. And eventually, Taliban took control of Afghanistan. I will not send another generation of Americans to war in Afghanistan with no reasonable expectation. America's longest war is over. The Pentagon says the last U.S. troops have flown out of Afghanistan after a 20-year mission. And the United States and the last administration made an agreement with the Taliban to remove all our forces by May 1. Nearly $7 billion worth of military equipment have been left behind in Afghanistan in the hands of the same enemy that America tried to drive out for two decades. American troops cleared out of Bagram, their biggest base in Afghanistan. The Taliban have taken Afghanistan. Now the question over here is, how did Taliban become so powerful and where does Pakistan come into the picture? Well, this is where you have to understand that Taliban now is not just a militant group, but an organized unit with both revenue and power. And a classic example to demonstrate the same is the trade of opium. For those who don't know, opium is used to produce one of the most addictive drugs in the world, which is known as heroin. And Afghanistan is the world's largest producer of opium. Now, if you look at the map, here's where in the Helwan province, maximum of opium cultivation is done. And this region is one of the most fertile lands in Afghanistan. And most importantly, it shares its border with Pakistan. Okay. So not so surprisingly, Taliban took control of this region in 2015 itself. And they also collected protection taxes from these farmers and also shipped goods in and out from Pakistan 
to generate millions of dollars in revenue. In total, the US estimated their income to be around $400 million in 2011, and BBC says that by the end of 2018, this may have increased to $1.5 billion a year. This is how Taliban became very, very powerful even in the presence of the US army. And as the power struggle between Taliban and the US continued, Pakistan actually benefited a lot from this deal. Why? Because Afghanistan is one of the 44 landlocked countries in the world. So if you look at the map, you'll see that if you wanted to ship something to Afghanistan, you had no ports at all. And the closest port is that of Karachi, which is far away in Pakistan. So the Americans used this route from Karachi via the Khyber Pass to transport 75% of its materials to Afghanistan. In fact, the Americans even used Pakistani airspace to enter Afghanistan. And in return for this access, the Americans gave out a lot of aid and funds to Pakistan. This is how Pakistan benefited from the US-Taliban conflict in Afghanistan. But the tricky part of the story is that it's not like Pakistan completely supported the Americans. And all thanks to Pakistan's political turmoil, while some leaders in Pakistan supported the Americans, the others actually supported Taliban. In fact, when Taliban took control of Afghanistan, Imran Khan actually praised Taliban saying that the Afghans had broken the shackles of slavery. And some people in Pakistan even celebrated the victory of Taliban in Afghanistan. The Taliban takeover of Afghanistan, according to Pakistan's Prime Minister Imran Khan, is breaking the chains of slavery. When you become a bad the rise of the Taliban and their complete takeover, we are told there are celebrations in Pakistan at the moment. This is Taliban of the Islamic Republic. How do you see it? We understand it very well. और हम चाहते हैं कि ये अमारत इस्लामी सिर्फ अफगानिस्तान में नहीं होनी चाहिए हम इसको पूरी मुस्लिम दुनिया और पूरी दुनिया में देखना चाहते हैं सो नाउ दिस बेक्स द क्वेश्चन व्हाई वाज पाकिस्तान सपोर्टिंग तालिबान एंड इफ दे वाज सपोर्टिंग तालिबान व्हाई आर दीस तालिबान ट्रूप्स वेजिंग अ वॉर अगेंस्ट द वेरी सेम पाकिस्तान Well, firstly, one segment of the Pakistani government supported Taliban because until the US-Taliban conflict exists, the Pakistani government would have kept on making money through US funds. Secondly, after the US left Afghanistan, the other segment of Pakistan leadership supported Afghanistan because the Pakistani government wanted to use Taliban as an instrument to keep control of Afghanistan. And this is nothing wrong. This is something that every big country naturally does to keep control of smaller neighboring states. But now the question is, if Pakistani government was supporting Taliban, then why are both these parties fighting? And what is the difference between Afghan Taliban and Tehreek Taliban? Well, the first part of this conflict is and has always existed between Afghans and Pakistan, which is about the Duran line. Now, if you look at the demography of Afghanistan, there are 14 ethnic groups and the Pashtun form the largest chunk of them accounting for 42% of Afghanistan's population. And the catch over here is that there is this border line known as the Duran line. This border was drawn by the Brits and all thanks to the genius drawing talent, the Pashtuns got divided such that now one third of the Pashtuns live in Afghanistan and make up the majority of their population. And two third of the Pashtuns actually live in Pakistan. So you see, just because some Brit wanted to draw a fancy line, you would be living in Pakistan and all your Pashtun cousins would be living in Afghanistan. And the irony here is that, although this Duran line is recognized by the international bodies, the people of Afghanistan do not recognize this border at all. So they took a chill pill and traveled between Pakistan and Afghanistan to meet their cousins. In fact, this region did not even have fencing until 2016 because of which Pakistan estimates 50,000 Afghans to be moving back and forth every single day through this border. Mm. And here's where, during the US occupation, Taliban troops moved from Afghanistan to Pakistan via the Duran line took time to recover, get armed and then attacked the US army again. And not just that, Taliban could freely move material into Afghanistan, use Pakistani hospitals to treat their wounded fighters, mm. communicate with their operational heads in Afghanistan and in some cases they even had real estate and business interests in Pakistani cities of Karachi and Peshawar. Mm. 
and when pakistani army started fencing these borders it enraged the taliban and became the first point of conflict between pakistan and taliban okay. because it's not just about closing the borders to access resources but it's also about separating the pashtun population from their own family on the other side of the border if this is very very clear to you let's come to the second point of conflict that comes from the second wing of taliban in pakistan which is tehreek e taliban wreaking havoc across pakistan is the tehreek e taliban or the ttp the ttp tehreek e taliban pakistan also known as the pakistani taliban in the last two days balochistan has been rocked by multiple attacks killing at least six security personnel and injuring at least 17 from pakistan at least five people have been killed in a blast in pakistan's quetta one child is among those dead ttp initial reports said they may have killed several pakistani military personnel and ctd members long story short tehreek e taliban or ttp is the pakistani version or you could say pakistani wing of taliban which was formed as a by product of the us invasion in afghanistan so while afghan taliban wanted to capture afghanistan ttp wanted and still wants to establish an islamic political system in pakistan based on sharia laws and this is where these group of men started to opt a collaborative model in pakistan such that whenever afghan taliban al qaeda or any other militant ally was trying to hide from the us forces in afghanistan these ttp members provided them with a safe haven in pakistan and eventually this band of people established ttp in 2007 in pakistan so although these two taliban groups are different from what we know from the news sources they are allies against a common enemy mm. and one such enemy right now is the government of pakistan so if this entire context is very very clear to you let's come to the final part of the episode and that is ttp versus pakistan You see guys after Taliban took control of Afghanistan hundreds if not thousands of TTP fighters were actually released from Afghanistan and a lot of them came to this region called the Fata region Fata stands for federally administered tribal areas and as the name implies it consists of several tribes which includes Arab Uzbek Afghan Chechen and even Punjabi people and this area is extremely strategic to Pakistani Taliban for two reasons number one they can easily recruit a huge workforce from the tribes in this region and since it consists of a large number of pashtun population it gives them easy access to labor and secondly the porous border with afghanistan gives them the leverage to transport men and material in and out of pakistan now until 2018 this region was a semi autonomous region with very less to no control of the pakistani government so these tribes could actually easily gather men and resources and attack both pakistan and the us army in afghanistan so this was a perfect hideout spot for all the militant groups this is the reason why The TTP was also able to carry out several attacks in Pakistan. There's a school massacre in Pakistan this morning. A horrific attack on a school full of children is still unfolding in Pakistan. Peshawar में एक स्कूल में आतंकियों ने हमला कर दिया है. करीब छह सात आतंकी स्कूल में घुसे और छात्रों और टीचर्स को बंधक बना लिया है. The Pakistani Taliban claimed responsibility for a brutal attack on a military-run school in northwestern Pakistan on December 16th. in which gunmen killed over 140 people most of them school children and because of these attacks ttp was declared to be a terrorist organization and in 2018 the pakistani government officially integrated this fata region into the state of khyber pakhtunkhwa such that they could take control of this region and neutralize the terrorist in this region but ever since the afghan taliban took over afghanistan from the us army in 2021 hell broke loose for pakistani government why because after the release of the imprisonment from afghanistan the ttp now has a strong headcount of 7000 to 10000 men who are waiting to capture and attack pakistan and just like afghan taliban used pakistani taliban network in pakistan to beat the us army now the ttp is using land and resources from afghanistan to beat the pakistani army mm. and this has now turned into a bloody war between both these parties So if you look at this graph you will see that ever since Taliban has taken control of Afghanistan the amount of terrorist activity in Pakistan has drastically spiked while in 2020 there were 193 incidents by 2022 this number has spiked by 87% to 367 incidents similarly if you look at this graph you will see that the majority of the spike has actually happened in Khyber Pakhtunkhwa region where the Fata region has been integrated and because of such bloody conflicts damages and loss of life The Shehba Sharif government even called for a negotiation with Tehreek-e-Taliban even though they were declared a terrorist organization. 
Now this is a very very big deal because when a sovereign nuclear powered country is bending down to negotiate with a group that they themselves have declared to be a terrorist group mm. that clearly states how powerful Taliban has become and how weak Pakistan is in front of these terrorist groups because while Taliban does not have to worry about its reputation or power the Shehbaz Sharif government has its reputation at stake a failing economy to fix massive flood damages to be rebuilt and he even has to cater to IMF to seek international aid and guess what when Pakistan sat down at the negotiation table, the TTP put forth two major demands. Number one, the Pakistani troops must withdraw from the FATA region. Mm -hmm. And secondly, they want the FATA merger to be reversed. And ever since these peace talks concluded with no tangible results, the TTP attacks on Pakistan have turned even more deadly. A group of terrorists have seized a counter-terrorism center in the northwestern Pakistani area of Banu. According to the officials, the terrorists took hostages in order to negotiate with the government authorities. Hostage crisis in Pakistan. Mm -hmm. Terrorists from the Tariq e Taliban Pakistan have taken counter-terrorism officials hostage. And now, TTP has even announced its own cabinet of ministers ranging from defense to education and even have ministries for political affairs, intelligence and even construction. And like I said, this is the worst possible time for Pakistan to be dealing with a terrorist organization while they're coping up with inflation, lack of resources and lack of funds. So now they're at a critical crossroad. If the Shehbaz Sharif government gives in to the demands of Taliban in the Fata region, it's going to be an embarrassment in front of the people of Pakistan and the government might actually collapse. Mm. But at the same time, if he doesn't, then the TTP might continue to carry out deadly attacks that will again add to the troubles of the nation, both in terms of life and property. And if these terror attacks keep on happening, as we all know, businesses will not prosper and the economy will keep hitting new lows. This is how, sadly, Pakistan has become a victim of its own brainchild. And this brings us to the last part of the episode and that is, how does this conflict affect India and why is it relevant to us? What we have to understand is that Pakistan is a neighboring country and regardless of how our equation with Pakistan has been, it is always better to have a neighbor with a stable government. Mm. Because if Pakistan is in chaos, that chaos will trickle down to the borders of India. So tomorrow if the government of India gives out aid to Pakistan, don't be angry because it's actually necessary. Secondly, by any chance, if India in any ways ends up helping Pakistan, then we have a chance to counter the Chinese influence in Pakistan. And lastly, this case study of Pakistan shows how important it is to tackle the economic problems and more importantly, what political short-sightedness can actually cost us in the long run. So keep an eye on your politicians because that's where everything starts. That's all from my side for today, guys. If you learned something valuable, please make sure to hit the like button in order to make YouTube Baba happy. And for more such insightful business and political case studies, please subscribe to our channel. Thank you so much for watching. I will see you in the next one. Bye bye. भाई पाकिस्तान की अगर मैं आज इस कंडीशन की बात करूं तो उसमें जो है अगर देखा जाए तो शुरू से ही लेकर अब तक एक बहुत इंपॉर्टेंट रोल जो है ना वो एक पॉलिटिकल इंस्टेबिलिटी का रहा है अगर हम देखें जो कंट्रीज जो हैं डेवलप्ड हैं स्टैंड हैं एक अच्छा जो है वहां पे लोगों का लाइफस्टाइल है वहां पर आपको पॉलिटिकल स्टेबिलिटी आपको वहां का जो एक पूरा जो सिस्टम है ना वो बहुत अच्छे तरीके से चलता हुआ नजर आएगा लेकिन ऑन द अदर साइड पाकिस्तान में जो है ना इतना क्यूस है अगर मैं पॉलिटिकल लीडर को देखूं उनमें कि आपको ये चीज समझ नहीं आती कि भाई अक्सर मैंने बात की है कि आप सुबह उठते हैं तो किसी और की गवर्नमेंट होती है शाम तक होते होते वो गवर्नमेंट बहाल हो जाती है तो ये चीजें जो है ना हमारे पॉलिटिकल जो लीडर्स हैं जो पूरी एक जो मुल्क को रन कर रहे हैं उन्हें ये सोचनी चाहिए कि भाई हम जो है ना इन चीजों को कैसे सॉर्ट आउट कर सकते हैं कि अगर कोई इलेक्टेड गवर्नमेंट आ रही है वो अपने पांच साल पूरे करके जाए वैसे ऑनेस्टली मैं बोलूँ जो हम लोगों ने वीडियो देखी है लाइक इससे पहले भी हम लोगों ने थिंक स्कूल की एक वीडियो देखी थी जहाँ पे पोलिटिकल इंस्टेबिलिटी के बारे में एक बैकग्राउंड बताया गया था क्या वो रीजन है फिर अभी आज की जो वीडियो हम लोगों ने देखी और जो हम कहेंगे कि काफी सारी न्यूज जो है वो मेन स्ट्रीम वीडियो पर तो मेन स्ट्रीम चैनल पर तो हमें देखने को नहीं मिलती बट इवेंचुअली मैं जिस पॉइंट पर आई हूँ मुझे अभी भी यही लगता है कि जितने भी पॉलिटिकल हम कहेंगे कि जो लीडर्स हैं या फिर ऐसी डिपार्टमेंट जो कि गवर्नमेंट को रन करते हैं 
मुझे लगता है वो बहुत ज्यादा शॉर्ट फॉर साइटेड रहे हैं और अभी तक हैं जब पाकिस्तान के पास एक गोल्डन टाइम पीरियड भी था तब भी उन्होंने वो अपॉर्चुनिटीज अवेल नहीं की और वो इतने लिमिटेड उनका एक सोचना था कि हम ऐसे ही करते जाएंगे लोगों को हम मैनुपुलेट करते जाएंगे और अपना काम चलाते जाएंगे मुझे लगता है कि नेशनल इंटरेस्ट में आकर कभी किसी ने काम नहीं किया अभी तक और अगर हम लोग नेशनल इंटरेस्ट की बात करें जब आप डिफरेंट अगर जो पॉलिटिक्स की जहां तक मुझे थोड़ी बहुत समझ आई है तो बहुत सारे देश जो हैं वो अपने नेशनल इंटरेस्ट को सामने रखते हुए बहुत सारे कंट्री के साथ अलायंस भी रखते हैं लेकिन इसका मतलब ये नहीं होता कि आप उसको गलत तरीके से इस्तेमाल करते रहो इनिशियली मुझे जहां तक लगा करता था ये मुझे पता था मुझे यही पता था कि अलकायदा शायद तालिबान है लेकिन बाद में ये चीजें जो है वो पता चलना शुरू हुई और टीटीपी के बारे में बात हो रही तो ये तो बहुत ही रिसेंटली मुझे इनके बारे में पता चला है लेकिन मुझे लगता है कि ये सब वो चीजें हैं जो आपने अपने हाथों से कुल्हाड़ियां मारी हुई हैं और अब आप उसका खमियाजा भुगत रहे हैं तो ये आ, मुझे लगता है कि इन सब चीजों को भी खत्म किया जा सकता है अगर लोग अब मुझे लगता है कि अभी भी सिंसियरिटी के साथ अपनी अपनी जो उनकी पोजिशन हैं उनको संभालें क्योंकि अगर देखा जाए तो जैसे अफगान में अमेरिकन आए तो आपको वहां पर भी करप्शन देखने को मिली वो लोग भी सक्सेसफुल नहीं हो पाए अगर मजीद डिटेल्स हम देखेंगे तो डेफिनेटली और बहुत सारी चीजें सामने आएंगी लोग की जिन रीजन की वजह से वो सक्सेसफुल नहीं हो पाए या जो चीजें हैं वो खराब से खराब होती गई या जो तालिबान है वो और ज्यादा इम्पावर होते गए तो मुझे लगता है कि बेसिकली जब तक जो लोग हैं जो कि काम करने वाले होते हैं वो सही तरीके से ना रहे तब तक जो है वो प्रॉब्लम जो है आपको फेस कर सबसे पहले तो जो मुझे एक चीज नजर आती है कि पाकिस्तान का जो निजाम है ना उसमें जो है काफी ज्यादा बेहतरी लाने की जरूरत है फिर उसके बाद जो है ना जो बेगानी जंगे है ना ठीक है ना उनमें जो हाथ डाल देते हैं उनसे जो है बाहर आने की बहुत ज्यादा जरूरत है जैसे अफगानिस्तान की बात करें तो वो जंग पाकिस्तान की बिल्कुल नहीं थी ठीक है तो उसमें जो यानी कि अगर देखा जाए तो उसके बाद से ही पाकिस्तान एक तरह का डिक्लाइन की तरफ जो है जाना जो है वो शुरू हुआ है और अगर मैं वहां पर बात करूं अफगानिस्तान का जो एक सिस्टम है मुझे क्योंकि मैंने भाई कभी विजिट नहीं किया तो मुझे वहां का नहीं पता लेकिन हाँ जो ट्राइबल्स एरिया है वहां पे अगर जो फैसले होते हैं वो कोर्ट्स की जगह जिरगे जो वहां पे बैठते हैं उनमें जो है फैसले किए जाते हैं तो मेरा ख्याल है कि अगर अफगानिस्तान को वहां पर कोई चीजें बेहतर करनी थी तो लोगों में एजुकेशन के साथ साथ जो है ना वहां के जो एक सिस्टम था उसे समझने की जो है वो बहुत ज्यादा जरूरत थी जो कि वीडियो में बताया गया भाई करप्शन की नजर जो है वो काफी ज्यादा जो है वो चीजें जो हो गई और हमारे पॉलिटिकल एक जो सिस्टम है उसमें सबसे बड़ी चीज जो हमें क्या नाम लेते हैं डिक्लाइन की तरफ ले जाती है जो हम जो हमारे अफसरान होते हैं उनकी तो एक करप्शन और दूसरा जो उन्हें अपने टनोर के दौरान जो है एक जो फैसिलिटीज मिलती है ना जो अवाम के ऊपर बर्डन पड़ता है उन चीजों को कम करके उन्हें इस चीज पर फोर्स करना चाहिए कि भाई अपने अपने ऑफिस से निकलो बाहर जाके काम करो लोगों की जिंदगी को देखो क्या है कैसे चल रहा है उस पर जो है काम करवाना चाहिए वेल मुझे ऐसा लगता है कि इन सब चीजों से ऊपर भी एक और चीज है और वो ये कि जब आपने किसी का जहन जो है वो रिस्ट्रिक्ट कर दिया बाउंड कर दिया कि वो सोच ही ना पाए तो वो चीजें कभी भी उस तरीके से नहीं हो सकती अगर बीच में वैसे इमरान खान ने जो एक बोला था पॉइंट बोला अफगानिस्तान के लिए कि भाई वो अब आजाद हो चुके हुए तो वो देखो सिचुएशन क्या है और आप किस तरह के लोगों के लिए ये चीज बोल रहे हो आई I मीन mean, मैं कभी ये चीज नहीं चाहूंगी कि यहाँ पर तालिबान आए और उनकी गवर्नमेंट होनी चाहिए वहां पर बहुत सारे लोग हैं अगर हम अफगानिस्तान की कंडीशन देखे वहां पर बहुत सारी खातन है जिनको पढ़ने नहीं दिया जाता नहीं। जिनको स्कूल जाने की इजाजत नहीं है उन्होंने बैन कर दिया हुआ है और वो लोग कितनी प्रॉब्लम है और आप ये कह रहे हैं कि भाई इनको आजादी मिली है इसका मतलब ये कि आप अपने लोगों का दिमाग भी इस तरीके का बना रहे हैं सो मुझे लगता है सबसे इंपॉर्टेंट तो ये है कि आप अपने एजुकेशन जो है वो अच्छी करें दूसरा ये कि ये जो रिलीजियस कार्ड है ये खेलना बंद बन करें होना चाहिए क्योंकि ये शुरू से लेकर अभी तक पाकिस्तान में यही प्रॉब्लम है कि लोगों के साथ इतना ज्यादा रिलीजन का कार्ड खेला जाता है कि लोग अभी भी इसमें ट्रैप होते हैं और लोगों के लिए बहुत इंपॉर्टेंट है कि अब सोशल मीडिया का दौर है तो लोग थोड़ा ओपन माइंडेड होकर चीजों को सोचे कि हमारे लिए क्या है और इन बाउंड्री से बाहर निकले क्योंकि इन लोगों को यह सोचने की बड़ी जरूरत है कि क्या ये लीडर्स अपने लिए भी वही लाइफ चूज कर रहे हैं जो हमारे लिए चूज करते हैं या ये उन डिसीजन को फॉलो करते हैं जो वो हम पर इंप्लीमेंट करवा रहे हैं क्योंकि मैं ये बात सोचती हूं कि हमें एक आम नागरिक को 
ये चीज जो है बहुत इंपॉर्टेंट है सोचनी और ये हमारा राइट right है कि हम लोग क्या ये अपने ऊपर इंपोज करवाना चाहते हैं डिसीजन या नहीं करवाना चाहते इतने टाइम से मैंने ये देखा इवन कि अभी भी मैं देखती हूँ कि जो हमारे बड़े हैं उनकी हुँ. सोचने का तरीका बहुत लिमिटेड है वो लोग उस चीज से बाहर निकलना नहीं चाहते सोचना नहीं चाहते अगर आप उनको बताओगे भी तो वो ये चीज अपने माइंड में रखते हैं कि हाँ हो सकता है कि ऐसा हो हो सकता है मतलब वो इतने कंफ्यूज स्टेट में रहते हैं तो मुझे लगता है कि आज की जो यंग जनरेशन है उनको ये चीज जानना बहुत जरूरी है स्पेशली जियो पॉलिटिक्स के साथ उनको अपना एक मुझे लगता है फेमिलियर होना जरूरी है हमारे पास अब सोशल मीडिया हम लोग ये नहीं कह सकते कि नहीं हम लोग ये काम नहीं हमें पता मेन स्ट्रीम मीडिया नहीं बता रहा क्योंकि जब आप डिफरेंट मुझे लगता है कि दुनिया से एक न्यूज सुनोगे कनेक्ट हो गया आपको लोगों का पता चलेगा आपको दुनिया का पता चलेगा तो मुझे लगता है कि इवेंचुअली आपको अपने घर में भी जो प्रॉब्लम्स है वो भी देखने को मिलेंगी बाकी आ, मुझे लगता है कि और भी बहुत सारी चीजें हैं जहां पर अब आकर गवर्नमेंट को चाहिए कि वो स्ट्रिक्ट एक्शन लें और आ, मुझे नहीं लगता कि अगर गवर्नमेंट चाहे तो बहुत सारे ऐसे जैसे देखो जैसे उन्होंने बताया भी कि वहां पर तालिबान ने अपनी एक गवर्नमेंट जो है वो अनाउंस कर दी रिसेंटली ये वाली मैंने न्यूज सुनी भी थी तो Uh, वहां पर उन्होंने अपनी कंप्लीट कैबिनेट बना दी अब अगर वो उसको रन कर रहे हैं या नहीं कर रहे हैं लेकिन एक स्टेटमेंट जो आता है उसका एक बहुत ज्यादा इंपैक्ट होता, होता है।, है एक दुनिया पे बहुत ज्यादा इंपैक्ट जाता है इट मींस के कहीं ना कहीं पर वो गवर्नमेंट को वो स्टेट को काफी ज्यादा वीक शो करवा रहे हैं और हम अपनी मर्जी से जो चाहे वो करना चाह रहे हैं वो होता जा रहा है तो मुझे लगता है कि पाकिस्तान की जो गवर्नमेंट है उसको काफी ज्यादा सोचने की जरूरत है एनी वे गाइज मुझे लगता है कि जितनी बात करें इस टॉपिक पर उतनी कम है बस जाने से पहले एक चीज और बोलूंगी कि जो लीडर्स हैं उनको बहुत ज्यादा रिस्पॉन्सिबल होने की जरूरत है क्योंकि जैसे हम लोगों ने बीच में मुशरफ साहब को भी देखा कि उन्होंने जो स्टेटमेंट दिए अब उनको उनके जो फॉलोवर्स हैं वो भी वैसी ही सोच रखेंगे और वो भी ऐसे लोगों को अपना लीडर और हीरो मानेंगे जो कि दुनिया में इतना टेरर जो है फैलाते हैं या टेरर अटैक कर चुके हुए तो मुझे लगता है कि इन सबको बहुत ज्यादा रिस्पॉन्सिबल होने की जरूरत है बाकी आप जरूर बताइएगा कॉमेंट सेक्शन में आपकी क्या ओपिनियन इसके साथ हमें जॉब मार वीडियो चैनल सब्सक्राइब शेयर